Hello, and welcome to the Raw Fork Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Marina Buxov, and I'm a functional medicine pharmacist in New York, as well as an integrative health coach and clinical herbalist. I'm pleased to go into season three of this podcast and continue to bring on other holistic-minded pharmacists, as well as healthcare professionals to the show. I'm constantly inspired by my guests and their stories and love sharing their points of view with you all. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Raw Fork Podcast. So excited to have with me here today, Dr. Ali Su. She is a Chinese medicine pharmacist and the founder of Global Pharmacy Entrepreneurs. So welcome to the show, Ali. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. So um, she actually hails from Australia. So there's going to be a lot of talk about what's different there versus our audience is probably more familiar with um, America and the United States. So I'm really, really excited to dive deeper into your work and your story. Yeah, definitely. Looking forward to it. Yeah. So um, why don't you start with just sharing a little bit about your background, maybe where you were born and raised, um, something about your family and how you came to choose pharmacy school. Yeah, sure. So I was born in Shanghai, China, and I was uh, grew up in a fourth generation medical family. Um, so growing up, I watched my dad, grandpa, great grandfather, who are medical doctors. Um, So my dad and grandpa are Western medical doctors and my great grandfather, he was a traditional Chinese medicine doctor. Um, He was a specialist um, and also founder of uh, traditional Chinese medicine um, hospital in Nine. And so I was really inspired uh, growing up, hearing them talking about different patient cases, learning about from both Chinese medicine point of view as well as the Western medicine point of view. They argue sometimes, but also uh, try to understand each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was inspired that I want to do the same counseling patients, giving patient care, uh, education. Um, so when I, when it was my time to choose, I chose pharmacy because I didn't like their night shifts in the hospital, so I didn't like their, um, you know, I, I want, I, I really think that pharmacy is in the perfect position for giving lots of our time to patient education and patient care without going into this night shift and staying in the hospital or, the, or that, um, yeah, part of the, the medicine. So, I uh, and p- plus pharmacists, we are experts in medications. So even doctor um, prescribe and diagnose, and they patient need to come to us to hear our expert opinion. So I thought pharmacy was the perfect choice, um, and yeah, and and then realized that um, you might have to you might have to edit the um um uh, 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 I'm sorry I'm sorry. Um, so, so we, and also we're in the perfect position to integrate um, and perfect position to change to advocate and support patients in the community because we see people in the community day in and day out. And we know their family, we know their medica- medication history, we know what vitamins they're, they're taking and grabbing from the shelf and we know their stories, their egg campaigns and um, so yeah, we're in the best, pharmacists in the best position to uh, liaise with medical doctors, understand patient situation, uh, mentally, physically, um, as well as integrating with the holistic health practitioners uh, to give patient a holistic care. Um, yeah, so that's why I chose pharmacy uh, at uni. Um, and since then, I worked in the busy uh, mixed hospital community pharmacy setting for about um, seven years. As much as I love being a pharmacist, um, helping people, I've, I was given too much all at once. Um, I think that's uh, day in and day out. You sometimes have 12-hour shift and sometimes you have to cover the weekend shift. So I was totally burnt out and I was giving without any um, 
taking care of my own health. So because of that, and also during that time, my grandma was really sick because she had a near death experience. Um, she had shingles at the back of her eye, you know, being an 85 year old, she was really re- weak and fragile, I was in and out of hospital for a couple of times. Um, so it was really stressful. It, her extreme pain um, was not able be able to control with any form of opiates um, medication. So that was really stressful on the whole family. At the same time as I was getting married, because I really want to want my grandma to see me get married <laughs> if she you know passed away so we didn't know what would happen so it was an extremely stressful time of my life and both emotionally mentally and physically um, and then because of during that time I also diagnosed with chronic fatigue so I was I was extremely tired and felt that I couldn't get out of my bed um, and that's when I started to reflect my life and wondering what was going on. I'm supposed to be the carer and get care for other people, but I can't even care for my own family. I can't even care for my own grandma. I can't even care for my own health. Um, So that's where I started to spend time and a lot of money on my own self-discovery and self-healing. I hired a lot of coaches and a lot of health, a holistic health practitioners to help me to understand. So understand my emotional uh, intelligence, emotional barriers. Um, so I've learned that our body stores negative emotions, just like toxins, and we need to release that negative emotions on a daily basis. Um, and just like going to the toilet, we must go every day. And then we receive that negative energy every day, emotions from external environment sources like the news, COVID death rates every day. It's really, it can be really stressful even when we're not aware of it, but just hearing that news constantly, that's affecting us. Also, a lot of it is it that internal negativity, internal negative talk. Um, from Chinese medicine point of view, that your mood, your sadness, your anger, your um, all these emotions directly affects your organ. So a lot of time, we if we not pay attention to our our own uh, talk. Pers- in internal negative talk that it's really easy to get affected and then toxins will build up affects our organ directly um so yeah because of that self-discovery and that journey i've realized a lot about myself um and since then i've changed my way of my practice uh completely um so i've incorporated the holistic health into my pharmacy practice I um, started Master of Chinese Medicine, tried to study structurally the Chinese medicine theory, as well as acupuncture, how that works, why it worked. Um, Yeah, and then, so we are still expert on medications as pharmacists, but at the same time, I'd be able to simply help the healing process, not only through the pharmaceutical medication, but also be able to provide evidence-based research to empower my clients in their healing journey. Um, in, in addition to promoting the importance of prevention to achieve optimal health and well-being. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I wholeheartedly agree with a lot of what you've said. And my journey, my personal journey is also um pretty similar. There's a lot of parallels about self-discovery and, you know, having a personal health uh, journey that allowed me to seek alternative modalities to uh, better help my patients in turn by learning all these new ways. And so it's just like learning more tools to have in your toolbox in order to serve our patients and our clients. And I think that's really important for all healthcare practitioners to just keep learning and keep improving, you know, as new evidence comes, um, comes out. And yes, as long as uh, it's, it has evidence behind it, that is the most valuable kind of evidence um, in today's world and clinical data trumps all. But at the same time, there's a lot of documented traditional um, modalities and wisdom that hasn't always been written down and there's a lot of oral traditions and 
there's a lot of uh, texts that haven't been translated into other languages. So it, you know, it's wise to also look to our past as well and not only always just uh, look to the new thing and the new treatment, but also incorporate what already exists out there in nature ready for us to use or in, in mind body medicine. A, a lot of times you don't even need to take any exogenous uh, treatments. It's more of mm -hmm. a mindset shift and awareness, breath work, movement exercises, um, ways to kind of be in your body and uh, use, it's, it's a two-way street, right? So we can mm. work on the mind to affect your body. We can also work on your body to affect your mind because that's the duality that we exist in. Mm. So it, it's really, you know, amazing to see practitioners that are involved in like both aspects and curious about different ways to improve patient care. And I also agree that pharmacists are in that central you know, triangle between patients and other providers. Um, we don't have to be there in the critical care or intensive care unit all mm -hmm. the time, although we, we also are as clinical pharmacists, but in the community setting, um, that's the perfect opportunity to, like you said, educate and get to know on a human, um, personable, you know, interpersonal, develop interpersonal relationships with our clients and really educate them about prevention and alternative modalities. Yeah, yeah. And what well, you said um, that a lot of ancient or traditional medicine were never recorded and, um, you know, never, the story is never told. And it's very interesting because the story I was uh, told growing up from a Chinese medicine, um, describing what a Chinese medicine doctor um, do is in the ancient China, a doctor would travel from village to village treating people and um, he always carry with him a big bag of herbs and acupuncture needles. And his dream was that one day he would be able to hang up that bag forever because there will be no more people to treat and everybody will be cured. And practitioners wanted to enjoy, want people to enjoy life long, free from disease and problems associated with old age. And they wish to empower uh, people to take control of their health and encourage them not to wait until they're too sick, look after their body and prevent development of disease. And the message from all, all that, the story is to value your life. And it's the most important, precious thing you have. I think that really resonated with me. And that story really gave me the picture of, you know, the peppers while being a Chinese medicine doctor. Um, yeah. So that just reminds me of that story, what you just said. Yeah, absolutely. That's the greatest gift of all, the gift of life. And, you know, when everything is going well and dandy and like nothing hurts and, you know, you're succeeding and excelling at everything, you don't really even think about the fact that um, there, there should be some gratitude, you know, around having this life and being able to enjoy it because it's just a given that humans like tend to take it for granted. But if something does go wrong, um, you know, it, every cell in our body in our biology um, is like is meant to create this beautiful symphony inside of us and harmony that we don't even realize like what's going on to keep us in balance and in homeostasis but we're so designed that our cells know what to do and how to keep this checks and balances but as soon as something doesn't work in the system, you know, when one thing is out of tune, um, we could really feel that on, on a lot of body systems and a lot of levels. And some people are more sensitive, others less. But eventually, if the problem compounds and it's not resolved on its own or with intervention, that's when we can get really sick and we have to go see a doctor or we have to take some kind of measures. However, if we were, you know, taking a daily assessment of ourselves and were able to pinpoint it earlier and uh, take some kind of action to slow down and reassess and kind of get ourselves back into balance and harmony with some self-care perhaps, then a lot of problems would really, um, you know, maybe not be eliminated, but certainly we could address a lot of them at the root level and at the beginning stages rather than waiting, like you said, until um, not a lot of things can be done to improve quality of life. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, you know, if everything's going well, we uh, kind of take it for granted. But then as soon as something goes wrong, that's when we realize, wow, you know, 
we we actually had it pretty good back then and let's get that health back and that's when we start to like go and seek um all these modalities and whether backed by science or usually the sequences we go to the science backed ones right <laughs> because that's what yeah. we come up with allopathic uh, is is the go to but if that doesn't work that's when we start to go outside the box and seek other things in the hope that something else will help us because mm-hmm. if not for nothing even though we are we take things for granted we're also very hopeful creatures so yeah. you know in russian language we have a saying that hope dies last so it's like you know your last thing in pandora's box just keeping us um human and mm-hmm. hopeful mm. Wow, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I think pharmacists is, is the perfect position to help people navigate through because it can be really complicated. You can have, you know, dozens of different health professionals. And you're from Western medicine uh, alone, you have different specialists and you have, you know, different, uh, I mean, like it might be different in the US. I've heard um, it's difficult. You need a patient advocate to navigate through the system alone but yeah. also on top of it then how we help patients who are completely foreign never heard or never really entered the realm of holistic medicine the lifestyle medicine to help them navigate through um that journey as well so i think pharmacists in, is in such important position to do that and then bring integrate the both together yeah so in america pharmacists and nurses i think are um two of the most trusted healthcare professionals. So um, I agree that people would share, like you were saying, personal stories with us and like really uh, we can relate to them on like this personal level and direct them to um, ways that they could advocate for themselves. Or yes, there's a whole you know profession of healthcare advocates here in the States um, because it is pretty complex. You know, there's a lot of moving parts. There's healthcare insurances. There are, you know, doctors within your network. There are referrals that are if, if you have to go to a specialist, um, you know, there's elective procedures and very invasive things that they could recommend. And then you want a second opinion and things like that. So um, it's pretty, you know, you know, overwhelming, just like being a patient, it just becomes a, a, a job, you know, like yeah. a full-time job to just be a patient and go through the healthcare system and, um, you know, have this approved by the insurance and go to this office and sit at this appointment and then get, get taken to a room. And, um, you know, the healthcare professionals, like ultimately, yes, you know, they um, are in the profession to help people, but sometimes it also kind of just becomes a mundane job and like it stops, yeah. like, it stops being human and it's just like about statistics and numbers and like being an yeah. expert in a certain body part rather than like a whole human being in front of you. Mm. Yeah, definitely. That um, that reminds me, a interview I did with Sue Jean, the, another pharmacist from the US, and she's really stressed on the importance of empathy. And But to be able to empathize with the other people, we have to be well, we have to take care of ourselves. We need to have enough energy well taken care of ourselves before we can give all the energy. It's essentially all energies we're giving out. But if we we have none left, then then we either give out negative energy or we're not giving it out any. So yeah. Yeah, yeah we're like empty cups and we have nothing yeah. to add. That's yeah. also been a theme in a lot of my podcasts so far that um, if we don't fill ourselves up first or if we don't put on the oxygen mask first, then we can't help anybody else if, if we don't help ourselves first. So yeah. that's like a lesson that I think a lot of healthcare professionals and especially a lot of caregivers tend to be women and moms. So I feel mm-hmm. like just like give and give and give. Um, and it's, it, we need that um, support system and we need that to be a societal norm that we are promoted to have the time and make the time and commitment to ourselves rather than always giving to other people. So I feel like that definitely needs to be um, more in the media and like more in how we think about ourselves as a society. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. 
Yeah. So I want to go back a little bit to your pharmacy school. I'm really curious if it's like the same structure as here in the States. So uh, I don't know if you're familiar, but here uh, you basically can apply to pharmacy school right out of high school um, mm -hmm. and get accepted to either a six year program and get your PharmD doctor pharmacy degree or you do two year undergrad and then apply for the pharmacy school. And usually you have to take the board exam called a PCAT, kind of like the doctor's version of MCAT. Uh, we mm -hmm. have a pharmacy version. So you take that uh, prerequisite exam, um, then you go on to take the four years. And so it's pretty much equivalent to a master's at the end of the day, but it's the highest mm -hmm. degree in the pharmacy field. Well, yeah, no, it's, it's different. Um, so in Australia, we graduated from high school and then you can choose B Pharm, Bachelor of Pharmacy degree straight away from pharmacy school. And then you do four years of pharmacy bachelor degree and then you do one year of internship. Then you get do a registration exam. Then you registered as a pharmacist in Australia. Um, so, and you can go on to continue studying Master of Clinical Pharmacy or PhD of clinical pharmacy, um, but it's more for a pharmacists working in a clinical setting in the hospital that you want to continue to improve your knowledge on the clinical knowledge, then you go on to do the master of clinical. For the pharmacists uh, stay in the retail, um, um, retail pharmacies or community pharmacies, then you can study a master of practice, uh, community practice, then you know, you can earn a degree, but it's not a must. You know, once you finish that Bachelor of Pharmacy degree and you get internship and get registered, you can practice mm -hmm. as a pharmacist anyway. So we don't have that pre, um, you know, farm school, pre-med. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. And then you don't have to be, have to do the full, you know, PharmD degree or master or PhD degree after. Yes, I think that's how we used to be, but... Um, you know, a few years, maybe like 10 years ago or something, um, they stopped, they phased that out and they only allow you to get a PharmD um, rather than just the registered pharmacist license. And so um, you have to, after uh, the PharmD actually includes a full year of uh, internships, like you were saying, they're called advanced pharmacy prex rotations. And after that, um, you also can study more. So you can go into a residency program or a fellowship program. And currently it's one to two year commitment and, and or go on to get your doctorate, your PhD. So we have like tons and tons of education possibilities. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty crazy. And at the, at the point that it's almost equivalent to how many how many years doctors spend, you know, learning yeah. and learning. So um, it's just like going more and more above and beyond. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So um, I want to ask you. Uh, you mentioned that you were part. You worked in a busy community pharmacy setting. Um, so did you phase that out, or are you still working in pharmacy right now? I'm still working in pharmacy, but I, I had to quit that um, full-time job. I was working 40 hour week because um, I had my personal you know, health issues as well as my grandma, as well as my grandpa was sick um, in Shanghai. So I had to travel to see him. Um, yeah. So, and also I was getting married. So it was a lot of things going on. So I had to uh, terminate that full-time job. Um, but, but right now I'm working part-time in the, in the pharma, community pharmacy and also since my own you know discovery my own journey I've changed my practice a little bit I still work in the community pharmacy but I start to work in the consultation room inside the pharmacy and um, booking patient to see me uh, from a integrative pharmacist point of view so um, so then what I can discuss with patients is their overall health, their, their mental health, and we can do the depression and stress assessment. And then we can look at that diet and we can look at even do functioning test, omega-3 testing and look at the cell, cell fluidity or do all these function tests as well as then um, using my Chinese medicine knowledge. So a lot of Chinese medicine knowledge is more holistic and lifestyle. Um, so not necessarily to be a medicine, but 
everyday life, what time you wake up. And in the morning, when you first wake up, it's the yin yang theory that when you first wake up, your body is still weak. Have warm water instead of icy cold water. Um, and then, and also, if you eat a lot of raw food, a lot of even sushi, you know, raw vegetables, cold, icy cold water drinks, then it's causing a lot of stagnation in your stomach and your stomach and spleen love all the warmth to help you to digest and to help everything moving. So a lot of that type of counseling using my knowledge from different modalities um, together. So still working as a community pharmacist, but at the same time, I can bring in integrating in the holistic medicine, lifestyle medicine part into it um, on top of, you know, review medications and, uh, you know, answer questions between drug and drug interactions or drug supplement interactions or that we do. Yeah. Yeah. So is the main job still dispensing or is most of it doing the behind the scenes counseling? So behind the scenes counseling, or I can, and I'm capable of dispensing at any time. Um, so it depends what the team want me to do. Um, yeah, so I'm more flexible and more intentional to help the pharmacy to grow their practice as well as helping more people in the community to be more aware of their body, to be more aware of prevention and also holistic lifestyle medicine, looking after their own body and taking control of their own health. Yeah, that sounds so amazing. So is this a common practice in your area, like having these kind of pharmacist consults? Or because it sounds more like a practitioner duty. And so in the United States, we have like this battle with legislations and like we um, are always pushing to give pharmacist provider status. So like a healthcare provider, um, because a lot of uh, us in many states are very restricted to just dispensing and counseling and um, you know some states even restrict like nutrition counseling for by pharmacists and um, some states allow certain prescribing or deprescribing others don't allow anything so uh, it's you know it's very very lagging and um, behind and they kind of like never want to give pharmacists this provider status of dealing directly with uh, making decision decisions or direct, um, you know, advice to patients. So that's like kind of taboo. Um, so I yeah. wonder how, what it's like and what the climate for that is like in Australia. And if your job is like super unique to, uh, to you and your pharmacy, or if this is like common practice in other places. Yeah. Um, so pharmacists in Australia, we give a lot of education we give a lot of information out for free in a pharmacy setting in between dispensing mm -hmm. um we're already providing a lot of education but what we are able to do is medication reviews uh we've called meds check inside pharmacy so mm -hmm. um and pharm pharmacies get reimbursed by the government so pharmacists be able to sit down with the patient um a look through their medication history and ask what the indications so everything about their medications. So we're already doing that. On top of it, we're allowed to do uh, injections. So that's another service that we can do, you know, using the consultation room. And we can do a lot more, you know, weight control um, as well. Counseling has a lot to do with, you know, pharmacists can give a lot of advice. And also we sell a lot of supplements in our store. And often patients need guidance and patient needs to ask questions. So, uh, so pharmacists that are able to sit down with the patient to do that. Uh, I mean, I guess traditionally would we have a consultation room there and pharmacists just use the consultation room in between customers. But as we see greater number of people in the community have greater need, especially during COVID or uh, the people getting sick easier, they need advice on how to stay healthy, how to boost their immune system. Then it needs a longer time to, to speak to that customer. So we just use consultation room and, or booking the time um, and, and start to get patient to pay for the private consultation. I guess paying for the consultation is not um, that, you know, everyday pay, people are still getting used to paying pharmacists for their advice, but I think it's, it's, it's a different, great way to move forward because pharmacists have so much to give, you know, in between patient couple of minutes doesn't give a lot of information and it can't give a 
you know, can't give a lot of our advice or information to customers. So um, we have few award-winning pharmacies already doing that. They have pharmacists, different pharmacists are specializing in different areas. Um, they have their own booking link and they have their own program. So patient pay for privately, uh, pay for that pharmacist's time and go through the program with that pharmacist. So we're already seeing that coming in Australia. Um, not all overall, not all pharmacies are doing that. I guess, you know, the location, different pharmacies are doing different things. They're all different uh, businesses. Mm -hmm. But I see this as a great way moving forward to, to help pharmacists to get out there and get our, our knowledge, you know, with you, especially in the USC study all these years. Um, the Australian pharmacists are interested in different things. So we do continue education and we go on to the master degree or PhD degree. We have all this knowledge. So I think this is a great setting. Um, for pharmacists to get out there and provide care and liaise between different medical professionals as well as the holistic health professionals together. Yeah, yeah, that sounds amazing. Um, so we also do MTM, uh, Medication Therapy Management Counseling, where we go through the list of all the medications. And um, our government also helps sponsor some of the uh, reimbursement for that. Uh, but overall, uh, you're right, like it's not common practice to... Um, pay a fee to an individual pharmacist. It's more like a complimentary service of um, short bits and pieces of advice and recommendations for what to buy at the store. However, like you were saying, um, it's not catered to an individual approach to some, uh, you know, a particular patient. So in order to sit down and like develop uh, individualized, personalized advice, for a person with their unique needs, it takes a lot of time and effort. And so I agree with you that it should be reimbursed um, by someone. Hopefully insurances will start to kick in on this. But as of right now, um, you know, it's mostly a cash based practice in America, I, I assume it's also cash based in Australia. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, so um, that's amazing that you're pioneering this. And do you have a distinction there between uh, independent and chain pharmacies? Um, yeah, so we have, uh, I guess, yeah, independent pharmacy. But a majority of pharmacies are, uh, have, are part of a chain or have a banner. So majority uh, are part of a part chain. Part of the franchise group. Um, yeah, right. part of a chain, yeah. There, there's some areas that has individual pharmacies um yeah the yeah. majority i think yeah are franchised we also do like we have um you know a couple of supermarket chains and then like two or three major chains like nationwide so it's like you know pretty a few big players um, and some of them really do have uh, services similar to what you're describing that they're piloting and pioneering. But, um, you know, there's also like doing dwindling numbers of the mom and pop independent pharmacies. And a, a lot of them are in big cities where they could still be competitive. But, um, you know, most small towns uh, just have like their big chains or the supermarket mm -hmm. chain. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's very hard to compete with them with their prices and, um, you know, a, a, yeah, pretty much with their prices because they're able to buy in bulk and administer everything in bulk. Um, we're also able to provide some immunizations, not all, mm -hmm. and different states have different restrictions um, for mm -hmm. children and also for different immunizations. Um, but I'm wondering, uh, because you mentioned you can give injections, are there other, uh, instead of, other than immunization, are you able to give other injections? So at the moment, um, I guess different states are slightly different, I've heard, um, in Australia. But uh, what we can do is three at the moment, flu shots, um, boost um, shot injections, um, and also the uh, MMR. Oh, the wow. Moment. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we can do flu and uh, pneumococcal. Um, and then certain other ones, depending on the state. So how about those um, labs that you were talking about um, and also being a liaison with different practitioners? Do you find that the patient just like brings over all their information and then you have them send over uh, different blood samples? Or do you have like a nurse that can actually draw out the blood samples and send it out? 
So the 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 um the test, the function test that I do is really simple. Um, it's two drops of blood on the dry blood sheet, and then you get sent it away. Um, and then you get results back ten to fourteen days. Um, so you just like prick it with a lancet. Yeah, prick it. Yeah, same as the glute blood sugar Test. level. Yeah, testing. Yeah. Um, others you can also um uh, get a hormone test if people want. We have this functional test lab. Um, what people do is send them a little tube, they spit in it, and then it gets sent away, and then we can you know, know their hormone, male and female hormone level. So yeah, there is a huge range, 42 pages of, of different tests that you can do, you know, patient pay it privately. Um, and a lot of patients, they, they pay, like they register online, they buy it online themselves. Um, there's few companies or the develop app um, with few, um, these tests, they can even do iron tests and a vitamin D test hormone tests online um, themselves. But I found pharmacists is in such a perfect position to analyze and to actually talk them through, analyze their results. Otherwise you just, you know, you know the numbers, but what does that mean to you? Yeah. It doesn't mean anything unless you, you know, you use it to your best knowledge to, to help you know, with your, with your own health and come up with a health protocol or change your diet and or change your behavior. A pharmacist in the community is in that perfect position to keep everybody accountable as well as, you know, read their results to help them to make sense of it and then translate that into everyday life and behavior change and to make plans, health plans. So I forgot to mention I was also a health coach and also a life coach. And that really comes in handy is, you know, health coach, uh, main goal is to be accountable, to keep it accountable for a patient and and be with them um, to help them to go along with their their health journey and be that source of accountable and accountability and also knowledge and education as well and and that role as well as so my pharmacist role as well as my master of Chinese medicine knowledge uh, works really well together so yeah so I guess that's how I practice in the consultation room is using the concept of health coaching um, and counseling. You also use life coaching methods to help people to change behaviors um, as well as giving advice from a pharmacist's point of view and also lifestyle, you know, treatments or lifestyle tips from a Chinese medicine point of view. Yeah, that sounds really, really comprehensive. So as I gather, um, since other pharmacists are also offering services like this, um, that you guys do have provider status in Australia and you're able to like see these private clients um, in your scope of practice? I'm not sure like whether we have provider, I'm assuming provider status means that government pays or has has a number just like uh, general physicians that pay for the service. But I don't think we have that, you know, not a status as in that we get paid for that service. It's all private. Mm -hmm. But we're allowed, that's, we're allowed to use the consultation room and counsel patients. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah. So what do you think the, you know, the benefit and the selling point of this kind of service is to clients and patients rather than let's say going to your traditional like general practitioner doctor or something like that it, can they use this instead of going to a doctor or is it always in conjunction with going to a doctor it's always in conjunction and and it it, it works really well when they're already seeing a gp but doctors don't have enough time to spend mm -hmm. uh with them so uh and also doctors are looking at from a conventional medicine point of view um for and then so after they see a doctor they come to me because that's all that's what they do already come into pharmacy you speak to me give me a script mm -hmm. but now instead of me just punching the numbers dispensing it give the medication back Mike can ask, hey, um, do you actually know how to use this medication? Are you on other medications or are you taking other supplements? Often they're like, oh, I'm thinking I need to, this is new, I want to be better. What What else can I do? What else? I'm seeing uh, this, I'm, I'm seeing this naturopath or I'm seeing this, this, you know, other holistic or 
clinicians or therapist. So being a pharmacist, I've been like, oh, you can book in a free 15 minutes consultation with me. We can sit down, have a look, bring all your document or your medication together to see if there are any drug uh, herb interactions or any interactions and also help you to liaise all this me- medical doctors because often they have number of different s- scripts and they're really confused and scripts from specialist scripts from mm-hmm. you know general physicians and so as pharmacists we can help them to understand even call these doctors on behalf of them I understand this is more like a patient advocate yeah. um, position in the u.s but I can see that, you know, pharmacists are doing that already in the community. Um, is that to be a half of our patients in the community to understand what's happening and to take control of their health. And, and on top of that, if they wanted to, to spend more time with me and learn, my, learn from me and also get the wellness program package or join the wellness program and doing the omega-3 testing or function testing, they're welcome to. But I guess the priority, my main role is to be that patient advocate, be that liaison um, in the community and, and spend a bit more time with my patients, uh, the customers in the community. And if they choose to, then they can join the wellness program. Mm-hmm. And is that a wellness program something that uh, they do like on their own time? Is it an online program or is, do they keep coming back to the pharmacy as the touch point? So um, is so wellness program looks like initial consultation where the function test or we set goals, health goals for them. Um, it can be small goals, it can be big goals. And then we have, for example, we have this 120 days in cellular repairment uh, program. So we're with them four months. But, so they see me four, four times, but in between they come in scripts and come and grab um, other supplements. They see me in between as well. So I keep them accountable of their goals as well as the exercises I give to them to do. And so over a period of time, 120 days, after 120 days, they do another function test. And then we see the difference. Wow. Um, Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome to see like that quantifiable results, you know, that shows them like the the actual difference that was uh, made. Um, And it helps them to keep going, helps them keep motivated. Yeah. Um, So is this a common practice with all or like, many pharmacists that are turning to this kind of model or are you just like very unique to your uh, to your field that you will have knowledge let's say of Chinese medicine and herbs and um, also you mentioned like you help with herb drug interactions do you guys have good resources for that stuff in Australia and is it um, you know is it accessible to all pharmacists those resources I think um, it's pretty unique in a way um, I know another award-winning pharmacy of pharmacists, they're doing that. Um, they studied uh, nutrition, clinical nutrition. Another pharmacist studied, you know, complementary and complementary medicine as a uh, degree after. Um, not many pharmacists are doing this, but a lot of pharmacists like um, me who are interested in a different modality, we combining pharmacy with different co- modality to help our patient in the community mm-hmm. um so i can see that i guess it's pharmacists are very curious and wanted to study wanted to know more things and wanted to so i can see more pharmacists i actually get phone calls a lot from pharmacists asking me you know where to study chinese medicine or or if they would just want a short course where to do mm-hmm. uh, you know where the commu- uh, continued education sessions are go to to learn more on top of what they know already so uh, I can see that this is a trend, you know, we're moving towards forward dispensing. It means pharmacists are getting out there, speaking to patients directly, having conversation, having that relationship rather than just behind the counter dispensing only. So I can see that it's, it's moving towards that. Um, and in, in terms of, uh, of extra practice, it really depends on individual pharmacists, what they're passionate about and what they want to combine pharmacy with. Yeah. And but I've interviewed this award-winning pharmacy and pharmacist, the pharmacy owner, and then her view of um, of future pharmacy. Her vision is that all pharmacists are become our own specialist. We can be a pharmacist. We all have the general knowledge of of pharmacy knowledge and medication review experts. On top of it, 
we can be our specialists in our own area. There, there's already a pharmacist, you know, toxicology. They're specialized in toxicology and other pharmacists specializing, you know, clinical nutrition, other pharmacists specializing in men's health. Um, so these are um, a few pharmacists and all of them are award-winning pharmacists uh, standing out um, and providing a great service in the community uh, in different states and different areas in Australia. Are you able to order those functional tests as a pharmacist or um, as another practitioner? Like do general doctors, GPs also order them or do you have to like have specialized training for this? Um, so, and so you, there are certain tests you have to special training for, for it. Um, but there are other tests that you can order through the company as long as they approve your registration, they approve, they have a criteria for you formed for you to fill out. So you can be a nutritionist or naturopath or doctor or integrative doctor, um, that yeah. And then I applied for it and then they, you know, put me through so that I can now order the tests as a health professional, a health practitioner as a pharmacist. Okay. Oh, so that's cool because we also have restrictions for testing as well. Sometimes we need to order labs only if signed off by a doctor. So we need to like work directly with or under a doctor. Um, some we are able to apply for as, you know, independent practitioners, but a lot of them we do also have restrictions um, to order. So I was just wondering about that comparison yeah because yeah. all of these tests are private patient pay for the right. private testing mm -hmm. um I recently i actually discovered an app and we have in australia a company actually have this app patient be able to just go on the app and choose what test they want and then pay it online they get sent the test kit oh yeah we have two yeah we have those um yeah. we'll for like microbiome type of stuff but i see them you know for urine testing um yeah, and obviously the saliva DNA testing as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, there's a lot. And also these are home testing. So, it, it, you know, it, it doesn't have to be go through, you know, FDA or TGA. They're, they're already approved home testing. Patient mm -hmm. can do that at home without yeah. being practitioner there. So what we are doing is we we need to take care of our patient by interpreting the results and help them to understand what's actually tested. Yeah. Um, so rather than leave them to their own devices and, and yeah. just get the number and not knowing what, what's all about. So, yeah. Sometimes they could test normal, but they have the symptoms. So something is not normal for them. Another yeah. time they could test out of range, but they don't have any symptoms. So we need to be there to like guide them and help interpret the symptoms versus the lab results. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And so um, thank you so much for sharing all of that. That's super interesting. Um, I hope that we are also starting, are going to be starting to implement that in the States. Like uh, that would be an amazing model to follow. Um, so can we talk a little bit about your own business, global pharmacy entrepreneurs? Can you tell us um, what that's all about and, uh, you know, what the vision for that is? Yeah, so I started because, uh, you know, and I, you and I are both in the uh, Marie Folio's B-School program. I joined B-School program because I wanted to understand more about business because we never really taught business uh, or entrepreneur skills during pharmacy school or during our own uni career, even after. So I worked as a pharmacist for 10 years and never really understand that much of business. So I want to join the program and to, to learn more. Um, and then during that program, I met you and met other pharmacists in the group. And then we practice on each other and help each other to understand, you know, the, the core business, our vision, our, you know, mission statement and our you know, target customers and, and send each other sur surveys and to fill out. And I found that group is, is, is great resources and to learn from each other as well as practice on each other. So, and uh, unfortunately we had to end the B school, but after that I realized, well, I'm a pharmacist. There are a lot more pharmacists out there wanting to start their business, but not knowing where to start and where to begin. And we don't have this community to come together and learn from each other and practice on each other. So I started the Global Pharmacy Entrepreneur uh, 
community and I want to bring all pharmacists who are passionate and wanted to learn more entrepreneur skills and mindset together, as well as helping uh, creating this ecosystem to help each other to grow their business because you can be um, doing a business can really help other pharmacists to grow. Uh, someone else my starting a business can help you to promote your business and, you know, creating this ecosystem. So that's how, why I started. Um, and then now um, I'm just meeting pharmacists from all over the world and uh, different parts of the country. Even I interviewed, so I have a channel called Pharmacy Entrepreneur TV and podcast where I interview these pharmacists and I interviewed Marina as, as well um, on the show to learn their journey and their story, why they want to become an entrepreneur and their entrepreneur journey. I've definitely learned so much from these interviews and from all these amazing pharmacists and their stories, their business stories, as well as personal stories. So I've realized uh, all over the world, I even interviewed, you know, Chinese pharmacists, uh, clinical pharmacists in China, uh, speaking Chinese, um, you know, to understand what's it like being a pharmacist, a clinical pharmacist in China. And yeah, he felt the same way. He felt stuck and frustrated and no one really understood what he does. Um, and yeah, so he uh, interest, he's interested in what we do. So it's very interesting how we can bring all these pharmacists from different parts of the world together to grow and learn together. And at the same time, by the time, you know, in the five or 10 years, Mark, our, our business will grow and, you know, we can help each other and help the future generation and mentor them, help them to grow their business. Um, and, and a lot of it is, is also mindset. The way pharmacists think is, is different to the entrepreneur way of thinking. So there's a lot of mm -hmm. fixed thinking that we have to be perfect and imposter syndrome. There's never enough study for us to do, you know, <laughs> And we always have to be 100% before we launch anything into the world. And these are some really common theory, uh, themes that occur in our pharmacy, you know, happen to me. Um, so it's, it's great to learn that it's not, not just me that's struggling, but, um, you know, I'm part of a community, can learn from, you know, we have pharmacist coaches inside the group that can help us, um, you know. Uh, so there's a lot a lot of things happening. It's like a marketplace at the same time, help us to grow and learn from each other. So we'll have monthly uh, focus group, help us to keep each other accountable. Mm -hmm. So if you want to welcome to join um, our Facebook group free. Uh, so really want to create community really to, to join and learn from each other and grow. And that's the whole purpose of, I'm learning and I want to learn with everyone together and I learn what's happening from different parts of the world as well, yeah. rather than, you know, entrepreneur journey can be really lonely, but, you know, together we can and together we can learn and, Absolutely. and also talk, talk about, you know, a lot of, um, you know, emotional issues. There can be downtimes that nothing works, you know, no one likes my post and no one joined my program and, you know, but it doesn't just happen to me. It happened to everybody. So, oh, that's okay. We'll just keep going or, you know, I pivot a bit or I change my message or, you know, it's all part of the entrepreneur journey. Um, so, so I guess, yeah, well, it's a community for us to all learn and grow together. And yeah. so, and also we invite speakers who are already mature entrepreneurs or, because what my passion is not only, only for, for pharmacists to step out into the world and to connect with other industries, it's important to connect with the tech industry and to learn about, you know, the tech company, how we can combine the pharmacy, our knowledge with the tech industry, as well as learning more from the business world, as well as connect with, you know, the university ventures. And they have so many opportunities. There's so much, so many competitions. I joined a recent competition. I posted in a group, the Global Health Care Hackathon, and our group won the award for the for the hackathon. It was a great experience, you know, learning from other teammates. I, 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 my team had two other medical students in it, and so it was great learning from their their perspective and making friends and connection, build connection, network, relationship, and which will you know, flourish later on down the track and we can really help each other to understand how we change or advocate for patients or change this healthcare to the better. Um, 
so yeah, I, I think it's, it's a great community to be part of. So if you are like-minded, if you want to know like-minded pharmacists and want to gain, you can be an entrepreneur as well, not necessarily to start your own business, but working, start to think like an entrepreneur inside your workplace, be an entrepreneur, then you're also welcome to join. So we will have more programs and more speakers and more mentors down the track to teach us um, different things. So yeah, that's, wow. that's yeah. yeah. I, love that. I love that platform of networking and connecting and learning from each other. And like you were saying, if you're learning as a group, you just learn exponentially faster and like you learn from each other and, and learn by doing, even if it's not perfect. So that's really, really awesome. And I would love to um, check out those focus mastermind groups as well. Um, so we just have a couple minutes left. Um, can we do some rapid fire questions? Okay, sure. All right. So uh, what's your number one advice for people that want to improve their quality of life right now? Be kind and love yourself. Prioritize your emotional, mental, and physical health. And set boundaries. And there are a lot of opportunities out there. We don't have to be so stressed or sacrifice your health and dignity and purpose just to, to catch those opportunities now. So be kind and love yourself. Wow, it's a lot to unpack there. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, number two, what is your favorite pastime or hobby? Um, singing. Um, I, I mentioned Marina, I joined the Chinese singing competition, global Chinese singing competition recently, and I actually won an award. Um, yeah, it was really exciting. Because singing from Chinese medicine point of view is great for exercising internally, internal organ, and getting your breath work as well. So yeah, singing. Yeah, and I recently heard um, that you can't be upset or angry or mad at something when you're singing. Like those two are just mutually exclusive. When you sing, even if you are singing a song about like pain or anger, the singing like transforms it, you know, and yeah. optimizes it into something. Yeah. Because you're letting it out, letting that energy out, whether it's a good energy or whether it's negative energy, you're releasing it exactly. out of your body. Yeah. Yeah. What a great message. Um, and finally, uh, what is your favorite beverage to drink? Beverage? Water. Warm water. Warm water in the morning. <laughs> <Some Yeah. beverage. laughs> Awesome. All right. So please tell the listeners how they can learn more about your work and get in touch with you or the global pharmacy entrepreneurs. Yeah. So I'll share the link with, um, you know, after the, in the comments, but also if you search Ali, A-L-L-I-E-X-U. So you can find me on LinkedIn, on Facebook, also on Instagram. Um, and also welcome to join the global pharmacy entrepreneurs um, on Facebook. We have a Facebook group there. All right. Awesome. I'll have all of that in the show notes and I hope that we keep that working and staying in touch and I'm sure we'll yeah. talk really soon. Thank you so much yeah. for the interview. It was really great. Thank you so much. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Raw Fork podcast and I truly hope that you enjoyed it and learned something from it. If you did enjoy it, please don't hesitate to leave us a five-star rating and a short, sweet review so that other listeners can find us across podcast platforms. To get in touch with me, you can go to rawfork.com or email me directly at marina at rawfork.com. Thank you, and I hope to see you back here next week.